Hello there. This is Christian Taylor at Christian Taylor 4027. Yes, indeed. This is another exciting episode of Amp of the Week. I know it's been a little while since I did one of these. It's more like Amp of the Decade, I guess, but doing the best we can. Uh, the Amp of the Week this week is the Custom Combo Custom 2, it's called. I believe it's from the early 70s. I don't really know. Uh, that's my best guess. It seems to be sort of modeled after a Fender Twin or something like that, right in that area. Um, give you a little background. Uh, uh, Custom Amps was started by in Chanute, Kansas by Bud Ross. Yep, he had the brilliant idea of wanting to make amplifiers, even though he'd never made an amplifier. And didn't know a thing about it, but he figured he could learn. Uh, he was a musician. He was in a band called Somebody and the Sliders. I don't remember who, who the somebody was. Um, not a whole lot of notoriety there. Um, after he was uh, done being a musician, not all done, but just done with that part of his life, he was working as a salesman. He was a traveling salesman, and he he, uh, bleh, he sold uh, garage doors. <laughs> yep, sold garage doors. And uh, at the company where he sold garage doors, he uh, he told them that okay, this would be this would be all right for now, but I really want to make amplifiers, and he wanted them to go into the amplifier making business with them. Mister Bud Ross did. He wanted to do that. And they kind of strung him along, pun intended, uh, for a little while. And uh, eventually he came back and he said, hey, are we ever going to get down to the business of making some amplifiers? And they said, oh, we're doing the best we can with that. Uh, we're too busy selling garage doors right now. And uh, he thought they were putting it on the back burner or not even on the stove, maybe. So he decided he would quit. Uh, he got a couple of loans. Uh, one of the reasons he wanted to make uh, amplifiers is because he wanted to make better amplifiers. In his opinion, he'd seen how uh, transistors were replacing uh, tubes. Tubes were kind of old technology, he was thinking, and they got real hot and they were real hard to make and everything like that. I'm sure you all know all about that. So he wanted to make better equipment. Pardon me. So he taught himself, <laughs> what a guy. He taught himself how to how to make amplifiers and he got a uh, $1,000 loan at one point. I know he got a bigger loan than that also from one of the banks once he got going. In Chanute, they were very open to the idea of having him start a business there because their economy was depressed and uh, anything they could get going like that would be good. So he started making the amps and uh, Lo and behold, the way it goes in some people's lives, they're somewhat charmed, and he meets Conway Twitty. And Conway Twitty likes these amps, and he buys a few of them. Uh, they broke down, unfortunately, but Bud figured out what the problem was and made them so they were virtually break breakdown proof. They just uh, weren't subject to a lot of the things tubes were subject to, and uh, turned out to be real reliable. Um, Funny side note here is his wife at the time used to take the leftover remnants, uh, the material that they used for the pleating of the, uh, they covered the amps in Naga hide, <laughs> which was a very unique thing. Um, just in case you fell down, hit your head or something, I don't know. Uh, it would be nice and soft. So I guess it was uh, basically was a copy and what they were doing with some cars at the time. And uh, the business did very well for a while. Um, Bud became a millionaire. He was a millionaire at 27. He got a lot of write-ups in papers, magazines, newspapers, uh, whatnot. And uh, he sold his share in 1975 of the business. And uh, depending who you believe, he either lost it in a poker game or he decided he just wanted to walk away from it. But... Uh, uh, choose whatever story you like and go with that one. Um, 
I have no idea what the truth is, of course, that's for sure. But kind of like to go with the misadventure of losing it in a poker game. That, that would be funny. Uh, some of the people that use uh, uh, custom amps, CCR, I guess their whole outfit was custom amps, custom amps, custom amps. That's what they used. And, uh, you know, this company's still around today. They're still making lots of products. I just saw uh, Shane in the blues. You may know who Sean is. Uh, Shane, pardon me. Uh, his channel is in the blues. A lot of good stuff going on there. And uh, just saw him doing a, uh, a demo of a custom amp. And lo and behold, <laughs> it was all tubes. The little 5-watt tube amp. Um, made to overdrive real nice with the one speaker, I think it had 112 in the speaker cabinet, a little, uh, little head and speaker cabinet, and uh, that sounded real good, overdrive very nicely. Uh, and uh, as I said, Bud lost it in a poker game. Um, I'm going to have part two of this where I'm going to demonstrate some sounds for you. Uh, it's kind of got a fender clean thing going on. That's not bad. Uh, also, uh, try it out with some pedals, uh, add a little, uh, compressor to it, um, add some different chorusing and, uh, and phaser. It takes pedals real nice. Uh, eventually I get along to the distortion and I hit it with a new X plexi drive, plexi crunch, excuse me. And, uh, that works pretty good. Um, the amp itself does have, uh, a mechanism way, if you will, to overdrive. Uh, it has a drive knob, which during these demos, it, I have it all the way down to one. Um, I don't like the overdrive that the amp has. I, I've never used it very much, if at all. Um, I've used it uh, mainly as a power amp for uh, some rack mount stuff that I have, and it works real good with that. Um, I saved its life. Someone was getting rid of it. Um, you know, Pardon me, I'm very rude. I didn't even introduce Mr. Bass this week. Mr. Bass, how are you? Really, I can't believe that. Wow. Would you believe it, folks? He's feeling low down. Yep. <laughs> yep, I'm an idiot. Um, so anyway, in part two, we'll get onto some sounds. Kind of got a fender clean thing going on. Uh, does pretty crunchy. Very well. I uh, imagine it would do mid-level uh, overdrive very nicely. Uh, gonna have to do another video to show you that. Uh, I'm not set up for that right now. But uh, Cheryl Crow is one of the modern users of these amps. I guess her outfit used these amps throughout her career. Um, and that's about it. I think that wraps it up for uh, Amp of the Week. My name's Chris Taylor. Uh, Christian Taylor at 4027, at Christian Taylor, 4027, pardon me. This is my host, Mr. Bass. He's low down, as usual. Low key and low down. Not a lot to say. Um, he's, he's there, though. He's rock steady for me. He really is. I appreciate it. Um, Y'all take care now. Bye for now.